Hey TV Nation, thank you for joining us in this live stream. Today we're going to show you how to reveal an underlying image grid in your hero design with Divi and we're going to use the Divi sticking options. So without any further ado, let's get to it. I want to say hi to everyone on YouTube and Facebook. If you guys have questions, make sure to leave a comment. Um, and yeah, we'll be keeping an eye on those and we'll recreate this tutorial from scratch throughout this tutorial. So throughout this live stream rather. Um, over here I have a preview on desktop. Now, you know, at first sight when you enter this page you get a grid that's kind of underlying here. You can notice the images in the back and then text in the front and a button. Now as soon as I scro start scrolling, these will kind of turn sticky and reveal themselves. So we're creating this outcome using Divi's sticky options. We have a very similar outcome on smaller screen sizes um, that I'm showing over here. So it's a very responsive design and we're gonna recreate it from, sh from scratch using Divi. Um, if you wanna lay your hands on the free layout that comes with the t this tutorial, you can navigate to the blog post, which is directly mentioned in the description below. And there you can download the JSON file, but you can also see all of the steps um, and follow everything through uh, screenshots and recreate it yourself. Or you can just keep following along this live stream um, to see how to create it. So over here, I have a brand new page and I'm going to enable the visual builder. So if you don't have a page set up yet, go ahead and do that and enter the visual builder. So as soon as you create a new page, you will get three options and I'm gonna start building from scratch. Now we're gonna need a one section only for this design and before adding any elements such as row columns and modules, I'm going to open the section settings first and make some changes that are um, necessary for this tutorial to work. So first of all, I'm going to apply the following background color to my section. Um, but however, you can tweak this design um, however you want, just to create um, a variation of this, but we're going to recreate this particular style. But once you get the approach, you can create any design um, and kind of apply this method to it. Next, I'm gonna go to the spacing settings of my section, and this is also a very important step, um, adding some bottom padding. I'm going to add 120 VH, VH stands for viewport height, and this kind of just means that it takes 120% of the viewport height um, in spacing. And that just gives us the freedom of creating this transition. So having the images follow us and then they'll stop at a certain point when the section ends, but it will just create some, um, you know, interaction with your visitors and you can reduce this hum however much you want, but obviously you'll want to have some space um, so that um, the image grid can come to life. All right, so now that we have these section settings, we're gonna add our first row. And the row we're adding uses four equally sized columns that you can notice here over this, on the screen. And of course, we're gonna open the row settings first. And what we're gonna do with this row is we're gonna build this image grid that you can notice in the back. So that's what the first row is dedicated to. I'm gonna go to the sizing settings, enable custom gutter width, put this to two, so this just generates a bit of space between columns and modules, um, but not the default value, which is three here, and it would be more space. We're also gonna increase the width to 100% and 2,580 pixels for the max width. And if I go back to the preview, it just kind of creates this kind of full width experience on most screen sizes. So these sizing settings do that. And I'm gonna to go to the spacing settings and I'm going to add some top margin 10VH on desktop. And we're bringing that down to 5VH on smaller screen sizes. So tablet and phone, 5VH. And this just generates a little bit of space between the top of our page and when the image grid starts. Then we'll go to, let me just switch over to desktop and we're gonna go to the position settings here and I'm going to add a Z index of 10. Now this Z index um, will be less 
and will be fixed um, in a sticky state and in a normal state. So that's the reason we're adding this set index here, just to make sure that the row that we'll add la later on containing the text and the button module will at all times be overlapping the first row. And that's where this Z index of 10 plays an important role. I'm also going to open each one of the column settings and on phone, we're going to, if I go back to the preview, you can notice that these are kind of next to each other, two are next to each other. Um, and to pull that off, we're going to play with the column structure on mobile through the main element of each column. So if I uh, enable responsive options here, I can go to the mobile uh, side of things and add a width of 50% and zero margin. And that'll help us create this kind of outcome. Now I'll need to add this to each one of my columns. And on the last one. You could also copy and paste styles or extend styles. Um, and then I'll go back to the column two settings and I'm going to reference the preview a lot just so I can explain to you guys what I'm doing. Um, the way columns work is the one on the left, so the, the fourth module has the highest priority. It will overlap column three. Column three will overlap column two. Column two will overlap column one. That's how the Z index structure works, the hierarchy. Um, but as you can notice in this design over here, the second one is overlapping both the third and the first one. And to pull that off, we're going to increase the Z index of our second column in the position settings. Um, that'll be a value of 12 over there. And now we have prepped um, the row and the columns and we can start adding modules, starting with an image module in column one, which we're gonna fine tune and then reuse for um, the remaining columns of the row. So let me just pick an image over here. Then I'll go to the spacing settings and I'm going to add some spacing values by enabling the responsive option here. And just let me grab those spacing settings really quick. On desktop, we won't need anything. However, on tablet, that'll be 10 pixels for the bottom margin and 2% for the right margin. And same goes for mobile. And then we can go back to our row over here and we're gonna clone this image module three times and place it in the remaining columns of the row. Of course, we're gonna change the images in each one of the duplicate modules. And the last one over here. So again, you can replace this with any content of your choice and also fine tune the design however you want. Now the spacing settings for um, the image module in column two and column four are gonna be slightly different. So if I open the spacing settings of the module in column two, um, we're going to modify the right margin over here. So we're gonna remove that actually and just place 2% in the left side of things here. So no right margin and 2% for the left. That's basically just to create a little bit of um, symmetry. I'm going to paste these spacing settings and add them to the image module in column four as well. And this will just help us create a responsive result. There we go. And at this point we have the image grid um, designed in a static state 
just how you want it. You can compare it less or more. So we're going to move on to row number two. And this row will only need one column. We're going to open the row settings and we'll start by adding a gradient background. And if I go back over here, you can notice this kind of overlay and that's create using this gradient background for the second row. So I'm going to add a gradient background. Let me just grab those color codes. And one completely transparent color there. We're keeping these settings as they are. And we're going to go to the sizing settings. And of course, we'll, we want this to overlap the entire image grid. So the sizing needs to be the same, more or less. Um, to do that, we'll increase the width to 100% and 2580 pixels for the max width over there. And then we'll go to the spacing settings and we're going to add some top and bottom padding. We're kind of going with VH at this point just to make sure that it's responsive. And we're also going to go to the position settings and turn this absolute top center and a Z index of 12, which will make sure that it overlaps the first row that we've added um, to this section. And you can already notice that through um, the gradient. And now we can start adding modules, starting with a text module. Let me grab that copy really quick. So this is some H1 content, but obviously you can tweak that however you want. We're also going to style the heading one text settings in the design tab. So these are the settings we're using, comp sounds for the heading font, bold font weight, uppercase, center alignment. This is the heading text color. Um, and then we're using different text sizes, 120 pixels on desktop, 60 pixels on tablet and 40 pixels on phone. Responsive letter spacing as well, minus three pixels on desktop. And we're bringing that back to zero on tablet and phone. Um, and we're also picking this kind of text shadow. So this option that I'm hovering right now is the one we're using. Um, and this is the color code for the shadow color. So just basically to create a little bit of contrast between the text and the background um, grid. We're also going to go to the sizing settings and apply a max width to our text just to make it look a little better. Center module alignment. And the last module we need over here is a button module. And then we can focus on the sticky settings. Um, I'm just going to add some copy here. Going to move on to the design tab. Use center button alignment. Going to style the button as well. So we're using uh, 20 pixels for the text size on desktop, 16 for tablet, and 14 pixels for phone. A black, not black, this is the color code for the text color. Um, a white button background color, zero border width, uh, 100 pixels border radius, comb sounds as the button font, um, a bold font weight. And yeah, that's about it here. And we're also going to apply some spacing values, also responsive. Twenty pixels for top and bottom, fifty pixels for left and right. And these are the desktop values and the tablet values, and we're slightly reducing these on mobile, um, where it's going to be fifteen pixels pixels for top and bottom, forty pixels for left and right. Okay. And now we have the foundation of our design and we can focus on responsive um, sticky options. Um, so let me go back to the preview over here for you guys to uh, see. And if I scroll, this is this kind of uh, transition that we get from the image grid. Um, it reveals itself 
And it scrolls with us to the end of the section. Creates this kind of versatile hero section that you can use for basically any kind of website you build if you just want to um, create something unique for your hero section. Okay, so um, now we're going to apply the sticky sections. And the stick sticky sections will apply, um, will need to be applied to row number one. So go ahead, I've just used the layer option over here at the bottom that I'm hovering right now. Um, and that just gives this kind of layer panel, which makes it really easy to open specific settings. So we're going to open the row one settings like that. And we're going to go to the advanced tab to the scroll effects. And we're going to create a sticky position by selecting stick to top. And the bottom sticky limit will be section. So we just want to make sure that when the section stops, um, the sticky effect stops too, so it doesn't overlap uh, content that's about to follow on your page. We're keeping these as they are. And then we'll go to the filter settings. And now that we've enabled the sticky options, we can start applying sticky styles. Um, the first thing we're going to do is play around with the opacity here. So we're not entirely going to bring that to zero, but we're reducing it to 20% in a default state. So it's, it's kind of, it gives this deep effect. You can go to zero if you want an entire reveal, um, but I liked the fact that the images were still kind of showing through, but um, weren't exactly visible. They, they are kind of serving as a background image. Um, and we're going to bring that up to 100% in a sticky state where we want the images to reveal themselves as soon as they turn sticky. And another thing that we can do using the sticky styles is make changes to the modules or basically any element within um, the parent element, which is the row over here. As soon as this is turned sticky, you can apply sticky styles to the columns and the modules. And we're going to apply sticky styles to the modules to create this kind of transition where the images uh, change in size and position more or less. So we're going to start with the image module in column one. Let's go to the spacing settings and we're going to apply some sticky values. Minus 20 for the top margin and minus 20 for the right margin in a sticky state for the image module in column one. We're also going to increase the transition duration over here to 700. And this just means, you know, this just slows it kind of down in transitioning. And we're going to move on to the second module here in column two. where we're going to need a sticky top margin of minus 20% and minus 20% for the right margin as well. Actually, we here we'll need minus 30% for the left. We're going to create an overlap like this. And we're also going to use 20% instead of minus 20 to create this kind of overlap here. And then we'll go to the transition settings and increase this to 100, 1000 actually. And this will just take slightly longer than the image module in column one. Then we'll go to the image module in column three. Again, the spacing settings. So we're doing this for each uh, module individually to um, create a different kind of effect. Um, you can definitely notice it here that they move in a different way, similar but differently. Um, the top margin is going to be minus 10%, left margin minus 25%, and minus 25% for the right margin too. And you kind of you can kind of notice that that increases the size of the image using these negative left and right uh, margin values. And then we'll go to the transition settings and we're going to use 700 here as well. Feel free to tweak these however you want to create the outcome of your choice. And the last module in column four, 
Let's open the module settings, go to the spacing settings, and over here we're going to use minus 20 for the top margin in a sticky state, and minus 30% for the left margin, which creates this kind of overlap there that you can notice. Um, and we're going to increase the transition duration in the advanced app to 1000. And that's about it. Now we have this kind of transition that you can notice. Let me just exit a visual builder so you guys can see what we've just recreated using Divi and Divi's sticky options. There we go. So you can tweak this however you want. You can also use and download the layout for free um, if you don't want to recreate it from scratch by going to the blog post mentioned in the description below. All right. All right, so that was it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and we hope that you're enjoying this ongoing Divi Design Initiative where we try to put something extra into your design toolbox each and every week. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.